Yeah, let's give uh, other people uh, a couple of minutes and then we can start. Okay. So we have 11 people uh, here. Taco. Hey, Professor. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. One second. Okay, 12 people already. Yeah. I think we should wait a bit. So this Zoom room works really well. Uh, yeah, it makes things uh, a lot, a lot easier. Yep. We we should save all your recordings, Professor. It's really valuable to check out. Yeah. The the uh, the the only thing is that I I am not able to see you guys. So if I say something confusing, then I won't be able to tell. <laughs> oh, you, you don't see us? Uh, I can see you. Ah. Uh. Uh, but I don't see the rest of people. Uh, yeah. It's personal preference that people doesn't show up. Is it actually they turn off camera? camera? Show here that can also. Yeah, there are no nobody nobody is turning on the camera. Uh, me either. <laughs> 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 but but you guys can fall into sleep uh, without without me uh, noticing. But I cannot fall into sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, uh, you, you guys can enable camera. Uh, oh, I, I can enable everybody's camera? Uh, no, I, I think it's per person. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can enable my own, right? But I, I think it, there is I, an option, hide non-video participants. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the, I worry that if I if I have all the people uh, turning on the video, then then the uh, then the the audio speed might be affected. I don't like that. So besides, I'm sharing the screen. So uh, yeah. yeah, I'm okay with that. I can see uh, Akif and Sako. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you two can be the representative of the rest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, should we start? This is four minutes after already. I think one of the students I see, we are in the library. She's here too. She can join me. Okay. Oh, in the classroom? No, in Santa Clara Library. Oh, I see. Santa Clara Library. Hey. Okay. Yeah. I, I think she doesn't. She's seen me now. She's seen now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can join. <laughs> She's inside, so okay. She wants. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's uh the start. Uh so this is a little bit small. Let me uh, make it a little bit bigger. But not too big. Okay. Okay, so uh let me do a little bit of adjustment. Okay, uh, we can start. Okay, so last uh, last week we talked about uh, uh, we started to define the flow network, and then we start to define what a flow is, right? And then we said that uh, the value of the flow. Oh, sorry, we we define what a flow is, right? So flow has three requirements, right? So you have to satisfy the so-called uh, capacity constraint, and you have to you have to honor the uh, the flow reservation, right? Cons oh, sorry. How do you call that? Flow conservation rules, right? Yeah, the flow conservation. So let me quickly walk through with uh, everybody so that we can, yeah, so flow conservation. And then the third is the skew symmetry. 
skew symmetry is saying that if you have a flow from u to v then you can say there is a negative equivalent amount of uh, flow flowing from v back to u okay so these two uh, these two uh, representations are equivalent okay so these are the three uh, important uh, requirements for a flow uh, to be uh, the, the, that's the flow definition that we, we are using in our discussion okay and then uh, and then we use this uh, vertical bar to to represent the value of the flow and we define the value of the flow as the amount of flow flowing out of the source node right okay and then uh, and then we said that um, we have uh, some a sloppy way to represent the flow, right? We use the set, okay? We use a set instead of, instead of uh, this uh, sigma form, okay? To represent the flow uh, from a set of vertices to a set of vertices and so on, okay? And then we went on to talk about the, the four very basic lemmas that we, we did not prove because they are, more, they are rather intuitive and we use them actually to prove a lot of other things, right? So the first one is the flow from a set of vertices to itself is zero. And then a flow from a set of vertices X to a set of vertices Y is equal to a negated uh, the same amount of flow from the vertices Y back to vertices of X, right? And uh, the, the lemma three and four is just saying that if you have uh, the uh, flow uh, into a union of two sets or flow flowing out of the union of two sets, right? Then you can actually split the flow into two parts, right? Okay, uh, so, and, and the sum of that uh, will be equal to the original uh, flow uh, as, long as, as long as these two sets are independent, okay, are disjoint, right? So then these two, these two lemmas will be, uh, will be uh, true, okay? And then uh, we, we went on further to prove the theorem that the value of the flow, which is the amount of flow flowing, uh, flowing from the source node into the flow network is equal to the amount of flow flowing from all the vertices into the sink by T, right? And we use this four lemmas uh, to prove it, okay? And then we show you this example as a, as a legal flow. So re the representation is again, that you have a, a number colon another number. So the first number represent the flow amount, okay? The flow amount is through this uh, edge and the second number represents the uh, flow capacity, right? The, this edge capacity, the flow amount cannot exceed, okay? The flow capacity, sorry, the edge capacity, right? That's the, our first requirement in the definition of a flow, right? So two, and three is okay. If you have four colon three, then that's, that's wrong. Okay, you cannot have a flow flowing through any edge uh, with the amount that is larger than the capacity. Okay, all right. So in this example, as you can tell, right, the flow out of the S, okay, flow out of S equal to four and flow into T is also equal to four. Okay, and these two numbers are the same. Okay, and then we move on to talk about is this is this just a special case uh, for this equivalence that we just talked about, right? So we just said that the flow out of S is equal to the total flow into T, right? Is this just a special case uh, for this equivalence? As a matter of fact, it is not, okay? So we further define this terminology called cut, okay? A cut is a partition of the vertices into two parts such that the source node is in one part and the sink node is in the other part, right? And you can see that I use the color to represent this partition. The pink color, okay? The pink color has two vertices. That's in the partition capital S and the yellow color has four vertices. That's in the, uh, that's in the, uh, the set of capital T, okay? And the sink, the sink, uh, small t, needs to be part of the capital T and the small s, which is the source node, has to be uh, the, um, the, the uh, set s, okay? And the s union T has to be equal to the original vertex set V, okay? So now with this definition, okay, 
then you can you can see that I can actually draw a line. I can actually draw a curve. Okay, so I can actually draw a curve. Oops. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I have to use draw. Okay, so you can actually draw a curve that actually goes around like that, right? So you see on the one side of this curve, you have, you have all the pink nodes, including the source node S. Okay, on the other side of the curve, you have all the yellow nodes represent capital T, and that includes the sync node, right? Okay, and then you can see that there are edges, okay? There are edges that, uh, that are cut, okay? There are edges that are cut by this curve that I just that are just true, right? So you see, this edge is, is being cut, right? and this edge is being cut, and so is so is this, so is that, and this and that, right? So all these six edges are being cut by this curve. Okay. Now we can look at all the all the amount of flow flowing through these six edges. Okay, from the capital S, meaning from the pink nodes. Okay, to the uh, to the capital T, meaning the yellow nodes, right? So you see, I have a two amount of flow from pink to yellow, right? Another two from pink to yellow, right? And this one, I actually have the yellow to, to pink, okay? So when you add up the total flow across this cut, you have to minus this two, okay? Because it's actually flowing from, uh, from yellow to pink, okay? Here, we need to count the flow from the capital S Okay, meaning the, 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 the vertex set that includes the source from pink to yellow. We have to count the amount of flow from pink to yellow. Okay, so it should be two plus two, and this should be counted as minus two. Okay, and this one should be plus one, and this should be minus one because it's flowing from yellow to pink. And this should be from, as uh, this should be two also because it's from yellow, uh, sorry, pink to yellow. Okay, so it's two plus two minus two, okay, plus minus two, plus one, plus minus one, and then plus two, right? So this net amount of this flow is equal to four, okay? And as you can see that this four, okay, this four is equal to, is equal to the earlier, the, the previous slide, right? We also said that the value of this flow is four. Okay, meaning amount of flow flowing out of S into, into this uh, network is equal to four. And also the total amount of flow flowing from the network into T is also equal to four. So four and four, and in this case, it is also four, right? Is it by coincidence that these flow amount, right? This flow amount are the same, okay? So the, so the, uh, so last week we said that no, it is not coincidence. Okay, it's not coincidence. It is actually a property. Okay, and that can be uh, that can be described. Okay, that can be described as uh, as uh, 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 in this lemma. Okay, the lemma says that you for any flow that you're given. Okay, on the flow network. Okay, and you pick any cut. Okay, you pick any cut S and T. Okay, the cut definition I already explained to you, right, is a partition of B into S and T such that source is in the capital S, sync is in the capital T, right? So that's called that's called a cut. Okay, so given that any flow and any cut on a flow network, okay, we have this property: the value of the flow, which is the amount of flow flowing out of S, okay, flowing out of the source node is equal to the flow across this cut, okay? And this cut can be any cut, okay? So any flow amount, so the flow amount across any cut, okay, is a fixed value, okay? Which is equal to the value of that flow, okay? And the proof, uh, I'm not quite sure if we went through the proof, but let's go through it uh, anyways, okay? So, uh, so the lemma can be proved as follows. Okay, so let's let's look at the the, uh, the flow across the cut. Okay, so this left hand side is the flow across the cut. Okay, and this is equal to the flow from S to V minus flow from S to S. Okay, this is following the lemma three. Okay, the lemma three 
okay? The lemma three says that if your source vertex set is the same, okay, but but your uh, your uh, your uh, okay, let's go to the lemma three. You see, if okay, if you have a flow from Z to X union Y, okay, this flow amount is equal to the flow amount from Z to X plus the flow amount from Z to Y, okay, as long as X and Y are disjoint, right? Okay, so that's that's exactly what we're going to use in this proof, okay? If you move this part, this part of the flow over to the left-hand side, right? Then you can see, right? S, F of SS plus F of ST, right? Is equal to S, F of SV because S union T is equal to V by definition of the cut, right? Okay? So that's uh, that's how this uh, this equation is established for the first one. Okay, and then by lemma one, we know that f s to s is equal to zero, right? The flow, the net flow from a vertex set to itself is equal to zero, right? So you can drop it. Okay, so only this f of s comma v uh, stays. Okay, now uh, now this f of s v. Okay, so you see that again, we use lemma four s capital S is equal to the source node union, okay, the, the capital S minus the source node, right? You see S union, uh, small s union with capital S minus small s is equal to the capital S, right? Okay, and they are disjoint, right? So the flow amount from here, S to V is equal to small s to V plus capital S minus S to V, okay? So this is due to the lemma four okay if you want me to go back to here to remind you what we're talking about is this okay so union of x u and, and y to z is equal to flow amount of x to z uh, plus flow amount um, uh, from y to z as long as x and y are destroyed okay so that's what that's what this this formula okay this sorry this equation is established okay because s union capital S minus S is equal to capital S, okay? Now, okay, so now look at this guy, okay? Look at this guy, capital S minus S, okay? Capital S minus S, remember, the source node must be in the capital S, right? So capital S minus S includes all the vertices inside capital S that is not the source node. And, and sync, sync is in T, right, okay? So, uh, so this capital S, capital S minus S include, includes the vertices, okay, of the capital S, okay, that are not either, that are not, uh, that are not the source node, nor the sink node, okay? So for each such node, for each such node, the flow amount from each such node to V is equal to zero by the flow conservation rule, okay? Flow conservation rule says that any vertex, the flow, the flow amount from any vertex to the entire V, right? As long as this vertex is is not a source node or the sink, right? The summation must be equal to zero. Okay. So each vertex in this set, each vertex in this set, if you do f of that V to sorry, that vertex, that vertex, let's call that U, right? F of U to capital V must be equal to zero for all the u, for all the u inside the set, okay? So when you add, when you add all the zeros together, the sum is still zero, okay? Therefore, this, this, this term can be dropped, okay? And this, only this term remains, okay? And then you look at this, this term, right? This is exactly the definition of the flow, the value of the flow, right? Okay? So the flow across this cut is exactly equal to the value of the flow. Okay, that's what this lemma is said. It's saying. Okay, so this lemma is very important. Okay, it's telling you that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you cut, how you cut the flow network. Okay, All right. You are given the flow. Okay, then the amount of flow flowing through the cut that you pick. Okay, must be the same okay, as any other cut that you pay, okay? So let's go back to here again, right? So if you look at this value of the flow, it's actually defined as this cut, right? 
Okay, so the left hand side, the left hand side is capital S, and the right hand side of this curve is capital T, right? So this is the cut of that defines the value of the flow. And the other, the other one, the other one that we talked about specifically earlier is this cut, right? Okay, so the right-hand side is the capital T that contains only the sync node. And the left-hand side has all the remaining vertices, right? Now, crossing this cut, crossing this cut, okay? The flow across this cut, okay? is must be equal to the flow across this cut must be equal to the flow across this cut, right? So all the cuts, okay, that you can find, okay, the flow across it must be the same, okay, for any given flow you're, you you have, all right? So that's, that's the conclusion, okay? That's the conclusion we, we have learned so far, all right? Okay, so now we have talked about the flow Okay, the flow amount across a cut. Okay, all right. Then we also want to talk about what about the capacity of a cut? Okay, capacity of the cut. Okay, so the capacity of the cut, okay, is defined, is defined as the capacity, the, the sum of the edge capacity. Okay, crossing this, crossing this uh, cut. Okay, so let's look at this again. Okay, again, this cut is here, okay? Right. As you can see, right, all the pink nodes, okay, all the pink nodes, there are two pink nodes, they belong to uh, capital S, okay? And all the yellow nodes, they belong to capital T. And source node, small s, is part of capital S. And the sync node, T, is part of capital T, right? Okay, so this is a cut, all right? All right, so now we want to look at the capacity, capacity of this cut, okay? So this is the way you count. You need to count those edge capacity for those edges from capital S to capital T, okay? You see that this is an edge, this is an edge from the pink to yellow, right? And the capacity is equal to two. And this edge is also from pink to yellow, okay? and the capacity is equal to three, okay? Now this edge is actually from yellow to pink, so you should not count it, okay? The capacity is, is not, you should not count it. And this edge is from pink to yellow, okay? So you should count the capacity one, okay? And this is from yellow to pink, don't count it. This is from pink to yellow, count it, okay? Professor, so the indicator is not shown. I think you are trying to show on the graph, but it's not shown. Sorry, can you speak louder? Your mouse pointer is not shown. I think you are showing notes, but we don't see it. Oh, you don't, you're not able to see the- Our Arrow. You're not able to see the arrow. Yeah. Oh. I think it's the same as in the 580 project, you need to make it big screen, full screen. Oh, I need to make what? Full screen, F5. Full screen, okay, let me see. Okay, yeah. now if it is full screen, then I won't be able to. Yeah, okay. yeah. we see. You, yeah. Are you still seeing my cursor? Now no, we, we can see the red dot. Oh, I'm sorry, gosh. Okay, no, were no. you were you able to follow what I said earlier? Kinda. <laughs> oh my goodness. I hope that I don't have to redo it. <laughs> okay, can we move on from here then? Sure, sure. Okay, all right, so okay. So, so oh yeah, so you guys should, should let me know earlier so that uh, we can fix it. Okay, anyway, can you see the dots? Yes. Okay, all right. So uh, again, as I said, okay, to count the capacity of a cut, right? You see this curve, right? This curve, this curve specify the cut, right? Okay, all the pink nodes. All the pink nodes are on one side of this curve and all the yellow nodes are on the other side of the curve, right? And then, so this curve basically separate these two uh, vertex sets, right? Okay, and so pink on one side and yellow on the other side. Now, let's look at the edges. Let's look at the edges that got, that got crossed by this curve, 
Okay, so this is one, right? And this edge goes from pink to yellow. And this is another edge that goes from pink to yellow. Okay, and this, this edge goes from yellow to pink. Okay, this goes from yellow to pink, so you should not count it. This is from, yellow, from pink to yellow, so you should count it. This is from yellow to pink, you don't count it. And this is from pink to yellow, you should count it. Okay, so, so totally the capacity of the cut is equal to three, okay, is equal to this is three, okay, three plus two, okay, plus one and plus this, plus this three, okay. So you see the, the, the arrows with the bold, bold line, right, okay. The thick line, the thick edges, the thick edges in this picture, okay, are those edges that you should count for the capacity, okay, because those edges are flowing from pink to yellow, okay. You only count the sum of the capacity of those edges flowing from, uh, uh, those edges from the pink node to yellow node, okay. All right, so, so 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus 3 is equal to 9, okay. What's the meaning of the capacity of a cut, right? That's, that's the bottom line you want to ask, right? Why do we only count the edge capacity from, uh, for those edges from pink to yellow, not from yellow to pink, okay? Now, the capacity, the meaning of the capacity, why do we care about this? Is because the capacity of a cut, okay, really set the upper limit, set the upper limit on the flow amount across this cut, okay? You should never see a legal flow, okay? A legal flow that cross this cut, okay? That crosses this cut by amount more than nine, okay? because nine is the largest possible, right? Okay, so, so you, you, can, you can have the flow, you can have the flow that flows through this edge to saturate this two, saturate this three, and then saturate this one, and saturate this, this three, right? You cannot have more than that, right? So saturating all these four edges is, the, is a must, as much as you can have for the maximum flow, okay? So nine is a bound, okay? Is the upper bound, okay? On, the, on any, any legal flow, okay, that can cross this cut, okay? Okay, so that's why we introduce uh, this, okay? Okay, so now, this is why we want to define the capacity of the cut, okay, is, is this theorem. The theorem tells us that this, okay? For the value, the value of any flow, okay, flowing through a flow network, okay, the value of any flow flowing through a network must be upper bounded, okay, bounded above, okay, must be upper bounded by the capacity of, of any cut, okay, meaning you pick any cut, you pick any cut and you calculate the capacity. That number must be an upper bound of any flow that can flow through it, okay? So this is, the, this is a proof, okay? So the left-hand side is the value of the flow, right? Okay, is the value of the flow. And we have proof from the previous lemma, okay? For any cut, the flow amount across the cut must be equal to the value of the flow, okay? From the previous lemma, okay? Now, the, the, this notation of F F of F, capital S to capital T is actually a sloppy notation. It's a sloppy notation of this, right? Okay, so let's just make it, uh, make it elaborated. Okay, we, we write this elaborated form. Okay, then this F of capital S to T is equal to summation of starting U inside S and summation of V inside T adding all the F of UV together, okay, right? So that's, a, that's the flow amount across from S to T, right, okay? So, but remember, in, uh, in, the, in the flow uh, definition, we said that the, there, is the, there are three, three requirements, the, 
first requirement is that any edge, the flow amount through the edge must be bounded by the capacity, right? So this flow amount across this edge U to V, okay, across this edge U to V must be upper bounded by the capacity of the edge U V, okay? So this, this is as simple as that, okay, due to the flow definition, okay? Now the right hand side, which is this, is a summation of U in S, V in T, adding all the capacity together. This is exactly the definition of the cut that, sorry, of the capacity of that cut, okay? Of that cut S comma T, okay? So then you can see that the, the value of the flow, okay? The value, the value of the flow here, the value of the flow is upper bounded by the capacity of any cut there, okay? It's upper bounded by the capacity of any cut, all right? Okay, so now we know that given the flow network, okay? Given a flow network like this, okay? So you, so you take out, you take out the, the, the so don't, don't worry, if you don't worry about the flow in this case, you just look at the flow network, okay? You see I have a, you see that I have a cap capacity two on, on this edge, capacity three on this edge, and capacity two on this edge, and so on and so forth, right? Okay, so you see the edge capacities given to you, okay? Then you can draw, you can draw the cut like I, like I drew here, you can draw a cut like here. And then you can calculate the capacity of that cut, right? Okay. And as a matter of fact, you can actually you can actually uh, do uh, a, a lot of cuts. You can actually also cut here. Okay. This is also a cut, right? This cut separate three vertices on the left hand side and three vertices on the right hand side, right? The small s is on the left hand side and the small t is on the right hand side, right? Okay. So this cut, okay, this cut that I just drew, okay, cutting right in the middle, okay, right in the middle, it also incur a capacity, right? So this is from S to T, that's two, sorry. Okay, so then for this edge from, from the uh, left-hand side to the right-hand side, so that's two. And here is from, also from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, capacity is three, right? And remember, from the from the uh, from the capital T to capital S is not counted. So for this cut, okay, the capacity is equal to two plus three. Okay, so the capacity of this cut is equal to five. Okay, all right. And then remember we said that a, the value of the flow must be upper bounded by the capacity of any cut. Right. Okay. So now here you have a capacity of nine and the cut that I just defined has a capacity five, okay? So any flow has to, uh, has to be bounded by all the uh, capa capacity of all the cuts, okay? So really what we're trying to find is what? Is the smallest capacity among all the cuts, okay? Because the capacity of a cut must be an upper bound of the legal flow, okay? So the smallest capacity, okay, is also an upper bound, okay? That means your maximum flow has to be smaller than that, okay? So the bound nine, okay, the bound nine, okay, saying that your maximum flow has to be smaller than nine is not as meaningful as saying that your maximum flow has to be bounded by five, okay? Because five is a smaller, is a smaller number than nine, and it's a stronger constraint, right? Because it's the upper bound, right? Smaller upper bound is a tighter bound, right? Okay, so that that simply tells you that, okay, the largest flow from in for this flow network has to be smaller than five, okay? As a matter of fact, we could actually find, okay, we could actually find a cut, okay that is simply four, okay? Where? Let me show you a cut that is, okay. So if you draw this cut, look at um, what I'm drawing, okay? If you draw this cut, 
Okay. Now the capital S is on the left hand side. Okay. Of the cut that I just drew. Right. Okay. That has a small s. And the capital T is on the right hand side that has the sync node. Right. Okay. So this is the cut that I just drew. Now you, you count the capacity is equal to two. Okay. And this one you should not count because this is from capital T to capital S. Okay. Now this one is from capital S to capital T. You should count. So it's two plus two. There are only three edges that are that are cut by this by this cut that I that I crossed by this uh, this curved line that I just drew. Right. Okay. There are only three edges. Two of them, two of them, are flowing from capital S to capital T. Right. So the capacity sum of these two is two plus two, okay, which is four. So four is even smaller than five, right? So by the lemma that we just, by the theorem that we just talked about, the value of this flow must be upper bounded by the capacity of any cut. And the smallest cut capacity we have found is equal to four. That means any possible flow, the maximum flow must be bounded by four. Four is the largest possible. Okay, uh, are we okay on this? Okay, this is very very important concept. Okay, so the maximum flow must be bounded by the capacity of any possible cuts. Okay, all right. So the goal, so the goal is to find the cut with the minimum capacity because that would be the tightest upper bound. Of your maximum flow amount. Professor, okay. can you go on the uh, previous slide? Yeah. Here, uh, the yellow on the left side, the you know the source not coming out of it from with two and two. So uh -huh. there, there is also another arrow which we don't count, going to the the other yellow with three. So we don't count it because it's not inside our cut boundary. But you're talking about this one? No, to the right. Which one? Yes, that one. One colon three? Uh, you know, from the bottom yellows. Three colon three? Yeah, yeah three colon three. Three so, colon three. three. Which cut are you talking about? Are you talking about this vertical cut? Or you're no. talking about the, late, the latest one that I drew? Yeah, yeah. The latest one that I drew, the latest one that I drew is actually here, is actually this one, right? Yes, but uh, this, this one does not cut, does not cut this edge. That's true, but what I'm wondering is right now in the latest cut, we are, we find out that the maximum capacity can be four because the cut boundary going out from source to the sink, only the output capacity is four, right? Four, yes. That's a, that's a minimum capacity. That's the smallest capacity of, of, the, of the cut. Yeah. But uh, the bottom nodes, there is another, uh, you know, let's say if five is coming out of source because we have a capacity coming out, you know, the source can push five. Okay. Okay. So, and yeah. Okay. You're saying that you're saying you have a flow of five that saturate this, this edge and saturate this edge, right? But in this case, let's think about that three is not going to the upside, but let's think that three is coming from the downside. And uh, right now we can actually, some of those flow can go to the right side with, you know, three column comma three and should maybe uh, will not saturate the cut. Uh, I couldn't explain what I'm. So, the okay. two, three comma three is actually taking some part of that burden from that. Yes. yes, I understand. I understand what you're trying to say. Okay, but okay, but if we look at this cut, focus on this cut. Okay, let's focus on this cut. Okay, now you you think about you think about the flow flowing through this cut. Okay, the flow. Whatever flow that you that you need to flow from the source node to the sink node, okay. Whatever flow you want to flow from small s to small t, 
that flow has to cross this cut, right? Has to cross yes. this, this cut that I just drew, right? Okay. All right. So now, if you agree, if you agree, the capacity of this cut is equal to two plus this two. Okay, that's four. Okay. Right. Then that's the largest possible you can get. Right. Right. You cannot. If you have five, let's say if you have a totally five amount of flow flowing across this cut, then somewhere along the edges, okay, there, there must be a capacity constraint violation. Yeah, you're right. I mean, in, in my case, I forgot that I increased that source capacity on the downside to three, then the cut capacity would be five. Yeah, okay. Okay, I got okay. it. Now. Okay, good, good. Okay. So this is a very important concept. Okay, why do we care about the cut capacity? Because the cut capacity is a upper bound, okay, of the maximum flow, okay? And we are interested in finding the cut that has the minimum capacity, okay? Because the minimum capacity is the tightest upper bound, right? It's the smallest upper bound, okay? That will bound your maximum flow, okay? So we're interested in finding the cut with the minimum capacity, okay? And there is a name, there is a name for that. So that kind of cut is called minimum cut, minimum cut. So when you hear people talking about maximum flow, minimum cut, okay? They are talking about exactly this relationship, okay? The maximum flow must be upper bounded by the minimum cut. Okay, so that's what this theorem, okay, is all about. Okay, all right, so now we're going to move on to talk about how we can find the so called maximum flow. Okay, that's the whole purpose of this lecture. We want to solve the maximum flow problem. Okay, and you remember the example I gave you, right? The matchmaking, matchmaking example, right? And the professor, uh, assignment of the professor to teach in the classroom that as another example, right? Those examples are the examples can be solved using the maximum flow algorithm, okay? Okay, so now this is where we want to learn how to solve the problem, okay? All right, to explain you the algorithm, to explain you the algorithm, I need to uh, in, uh, introduce this, uh, this terminology called residual, residual network, okay? Residual network, right? What, what is a residual network, okay? Okay, so that's it. Let's think about this. Okay, suppose you are given a flow network G. Okay, you're given a flow network G. Okay, and on this flow network, you already have a flow. You already have a flow there. Okay, okay, then, then we can define. Okay, so given the flow network G and a current flow F we can define the so-called residual network, which is a property of the original flow network and the current flow F, okay? Okay, so G sub F is a, is a residual network, okay? So this, this, uh, this network has the same vertex set V as the original network, okay? But the edge set, the edge set is different, okay? The edge set is different. Okay, all right, so the edge, the edges in the residual network, the edge, edges in the residual network, okay, are those edges, are those edges in the original, in the original network, whose capacity has not yet been saturated by the flow, okay, say one more time. If you have an edge UV, if you have an edge UV in the in the flow network G, right? Okay, and the capacity is C for that edge. And the given flow F, okay, given flow F has a flow value flowing through this edge. Now, if the capacity is larger than the current flow, okay, flowing through this edge, that means the capacity is not yet being saturated. Okay, so, so capacity minus the flow is a positive number, is a positive number, right? Okay, then any such edge, any such an edge, okay, 
will be an edge in the residual network. Okay, does that does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay. Then say one more time. Okay, you are given the full network G. Okay, with vertexes and edges, and you're also given a flow on this flow network now. Okay, you go to every edge in this flow network. Okay, and look at every edge UV. If the capacity of the edge is larger than the current flow amount flowing through this edge, is larger. Then in the residual network, there is an edge. There is an edge in the EF, okay? In the EF from U to B, okay? So, so, the, so the reason we call this residual network simply, simply, to, re, simply uh, to reflect the fact that there is still some residual capacity that we can push more flow, okay, through this edge, okay? So why do we say residual, okay? Simply because of that, okay? The capacity has not yet fully saturated, okay, by the current flow, okay? So you could push, you could push the flow across this edge, okay? And that's why we put an edge in the residual network, okay? All right, so here, here's an, here's a very, uh, here's an example, okay? Suppose you have a flow network G and this flow network is, can be much bigger, much bigger than, than what I show here, okay? Here, I just show you an edge, okay? Let's say I have an edge from V to U, okay? I have an edge from V to U, okay? And the edge capacity is five and the current flow amount is three. That means there is the amount of three flowing from V to U. Get it? Okay. All right, so now, based on the definition, the capacity is five, the current flow amount is three. So how much more can you push from V to U? There are two more, right? Okay, there are two more amount of flow you can push. So in the residual network, in the residual network, there is an edge from V to U. Okay, with the edge capacity equal to the original capacity minus the current flow, which is equal to two. Okay, so this residual network is saying that for this edge, you can push two more amount, two more amount of flow from V to U without violating the capacity constraint. Are you okay on that? Yes. You okay, on that? okay. now. The, the, the important part is, is this side, okay? The important part is this side. Given the G on the left-hand side, given the G on the left-hand side, for the GF, for the residual network on the right-hand side, we should also add another edge from U to V, okay? From U to V with the, with the capacity amount, with the capacity amount, equal to the current amount from V to U, okay? So this three, this three comes from the fact that there is currently a flow amount of three from V to U, okay? In that case, you set a, an edge in the residual network from U to V with the amount of three, okay? Now, can anybody tell me why? Why we why we can why we can add this edge and push amount of up to uh, uh, three unit of flow from U to V. I'm just my guess because there is an already an occurring flow from between U and V, and we are not using it to transmit from U to V. So in the residue, we want to show this. No. Okay. No. The 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 the, the okay. The, 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 that's a good attempt. Okay. Good attempt. The 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 better way to say is this. Currently, the flow is from V to U with three amount of flow from V to U, right? Okay. There's three amount of flow from V to U. Okay. Now, when you push, when you need to push the flow from U to V, okay, from U to V, because currently there are three amount from V to U you can at least revert, 
you can at least revert this real amount of the current flow back to zero. Right? Okay. Okay. So that that's what that's what it means that because of the current flow, because the current flow has the three amount, three amount of flow from V to U, you could actually push the flow from U to V with exactly that amount to push back this and back to zero. Okay, so so that's why we have the residual edge from U to V with the capacity equal to three. Okay, you cannot push more than three. Okay, because if you push more than three from U to V, you revert these three amount, you are adding some additional flow from U to V, but U to V has no edge. That means the capacity is zero. So if you have an additional amount from U to V, which is greater than zero, then you are violating the capacity constraint, right? Okay, so the amount of flow you can push Given the fact that there is a three amount of flow from V to U, the amount of flow you can push from U back to V is exactly equal to that amount to revert it, okay? To revert this back to zero, okay? And so that's why you have the three there, okay? Can, can you explain the last uh, sentence that you cannot do U to V? Can you explain? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Give, uh, give me a sec, give me a sec. Okay, yeah. So uh, yeah, I uh, apologize that uh, due to my travel, I'm not. I'm having some uh, <clears throat> some uh, cold issue, so so I need to sneeze and uh, cough and so on from time to time. Right? Okay, so now let me let me explain one more time. Okay, so okay, so. The flow F, okay, the flow F says that I currently have amount of three flowing from V to U, right, on the left-hand side, get it, okay? The current flow has amount of three from V to U on the left-hand side, okay? Remember, remember when we, don't have a, when we don't have an edge, that means what, okay? When we don't have an edge, that, that is equivalent to to that is the oops sorry that is equivalent to the fact that you actually have an edge okay but the capacity is zero okay you just don't allow any flow there is there should not be any flow from u to v okay if you don't have an edge equivalently equivalent is that you do have an edge but the capacity is zero get it okay now if you have since you currently in the flow F, you have three amount of flow from V to U. Okay, three amount. Okay, okay. So the question is, if I want to push, if I want to push flow, okay, from U to V, given the fact that there is currently three amount of flow from V to U, if I want to push flow from U to V, can I do that? Okay, the answer is yes, because currently I have flow three from V to U. I can at least revert that flow, okay? I can revert that flow. So I can revert that flow, okay? I can actually flow. So that's why in the residual network here, I can have flow reverted from U to V, okay? How much can I revert? You can revert up to three, up to three. You cannot revert more than that because if you revert more than that, let's say you revert four amount, four, Okay. Professor, you, that zero is zero comma three. Should we think about that zero comma three or it is comma zero? This is comma zero. This zero is comma zero. It's comma zero and it's also zero comma zero. There, there's, there's no flow, right? But From, isn't this a you know normal and possible scenario that you, you know there are uh, you give an example of traffic lanes, there can, there can be a path from V to U and we can push three flows there, but maybe yeah. we, we do not allow U to V. So why we cannot have, you know, zero, zero capacity? 
zero, sorry, zero capacity. So there is no edge. No edge is equivalent as there is a zero capacity. Okay, there is no edge, be, meaning you cannot. The, the reason the reason that there is no edge means that you are not allowed to push to push the flow from U to V. You you cannot have a you cannot end up you cannot end up having a net flow from U to V. Currently, currently there is a flow from V to U with three amount. Okay, with three amount from V to U. Okay, V to U. Okay, under such a condition. Okay, if I want to push flow from U to V, I could do it. I could do it. I could push the flow to revert this three so that this in so that this is no longer three okay i can revert how much i can revert up to three i can revert up to three because if i revert more than three let's say if i revert revert four then my net then my net flow from u to v will become one will become one and this will become zero okay this will become zero and that will become one. But this capacity is actually zero. So I have a violation here. I have a capacity violation here. Okay. So the amount of flow, given the fact that the flow F, there is a three amount of flow from V to U. Okay. You could push from U back to V by reverting the three. Okay. That's what we mean by putting, adding an edge here and mark three as a capacity there. Okay, so I, I don't know, uh, I, have, I, I feel that I, am being, I have been repeating myself uh, already. Uh, either you have a question to ask or I have to move on. No. It should be okay, right? Yeah, it's okay. okay? Yeah, so currently, and let me say the, the last time, right? Currently in F, I have a flow amount of three flow amount of three from V to U, okay? Okay, from V to U. So I have this three amount of flow from V to U. Now I am asking the question, if I want to push the flow from U to V, okay, from U to V, okay, how much can I push? I can push three because the, that three, I can revert this three amount, okay? I can revert this three amount, okay? So that means I can push the amount of up to three from U to V, okay, without causing without causing the flow to be illegal. Okay, I'm I'm changing the flow by pushing up to three amount of flow from U to V. Okay, so that's this three is all about. Okay, okay. So given such given such a graph on the left hand side, okay. Even such a graph on the left hand side, there was uh, there is also one edge. Now you look at the edge. Do look at the graph on the right hand side. You could actually end up having two edges, two edges instead of one. Okay, so so and this is actually a general uh, a general uh, property. Okay, in the sense that the number the total number of edges total number of edges in the residual network. Okay must be must be upper bounded by two times the number of edges in the original full network okay because in this example as you, this is in this example you see in the flow network i only have one edge but in the residual network i actually end up having two edges okay so that's that's possible that's quite possible okay and so so but okay but if this is not three, let's say if this is zero, okay? If this is zero colon five, then the residual network will be five. This will be five. And there's no such edge because it's zero, okay? If this is zero, there's, there's no flow you can push from U to V. You cannot push. If you, because if you push, then you, you, are, you are adding the flow, okay, the net flow the net flow will you will have a net flow from u to v but there is there the, the capacity is actually zero from u to v professor last question what would happen if the upper edge is 1 comma 1 and the lower one is 3 comma 5 
is no, 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 no. Uh, uh, okay, if, if you remember in the second slide in this lecture, we said that we said that in our discussion, the flow network between any pair of vertices, okay, there's only one edge, either go from one side to the other or the oh, other oh, side. Oh, okay. Right? Remember that? Okay, so we, we don't, and because whenever you have that, you can, you can uh, transform, you can transform. <sighs> Without without changing the without changing the uh, the solution right okay so yeah. so that yeah. rule doesn't uh, doesn't work on the residual uh, network because on the residual we have two edges between. oh yeah 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 no no you're right so residual network is not is not limited by that so that that the uh, limit that uh, uh, I wouldn't call it limitation right that uh, that uh, uh, specification is is the specification for the flow network. Okay, is okay. is a, is is for this flow network, not for the residual network. Residual network, you can easily have the have have the double double edges. Okay, all right. So so the lemma. Okay, so this lemma. Okay, is also an important property. We should also know about it. Okay, all right. So okay. Now here is the practice. Okay, that's practice. Uh, let's practice how uh, we can construct the residual network. Okay, on the top, on the upper half, right, you see the flow network with the flow. Okay, right. This is a capacity three flow one, right? Capacity two flow two, and so on. Okay, so this is a flow network with the legal flow there. Okay, on the upper half. Okay, now we're going to construct. We're going to construct the residual network based on that. Okay. So you see the residual network has the same set of vertices, okay? But the edges, okay? Look at the edges, okay? Now let's look at this this one from S from S to U, okay? S to U is one colon three, okay? So you see from this S to U, the capacity is three, you're only using one. So you can increase another two, right? So this direction has a capacity two, okay? But because you currently have a flow one from S to U, so you could actually push another flow back from U to S to offset this, okay, without causing the capacity constraint violation. That's why you can have this edge, okay, there's an edge from U back to S with the capacity one, okay? That's okay, meaning if you push a flow from U to S in your residual network with the capacity one, that, equ that is equivalent to reverting this one from one back to zero okay so which is totally okay okay and you but you cannot you cannot push more than one because if you push more than one then then the net flow then the net flow would be a positive flow from u to s which is not allowed because u to s has no edge okay all right so the same thing is here okay here from x to u i have capacity three and one so because you only consume one, so you can push two more, right? So you see from X to U, you have two more. And because of you have a flow amount of one to one from X to U, so you can push back from U to X to revert this one, okay? So that's why from U to X, you can have one, okay? And so on and so forth. Now let's look at this, this S to X, right? So you already have two and two, okay? So from S to X, there's zero. You cannot push any more. Right, so there's no edge from S to X, but you have two there, so you can revert back from X to S with two amount. Okay, okay, so uh, I think that should be uh, clear enough. Okay, so this is you should go home and look at. Uh, this is a very important construction. Okay, of the residual network from the uh, flow network and the given flow F. Okay. Okay, why do we care about the residual network? Okay, it's very important. Why? Because we could find, we could find, right? We could find a way to increase your current flow, okay? By going from the source node in your residual network and follow through a, follow through a path, follow through a path and ends at your sink okay if you can find a path if you can find a path okay 
in your residual network, okay, from S to T, okay, that means what? That means you are able to find this path to push additional flow from S to T, okay? So that means that given the current flow F that you have, you could use this so-called augmenting path. You could use this augmenting path, okay? to push additional flow from S to T, okay? To increase, okay? To increase your current flow, okay? Current value of the flow. Remember, we're trying to find maximum flow problem, right? We're trying to solve the maximum flow problem, right? So given the flow, how can we increase it, okay? We can do it this way, okay? By looking at the residual network and search for a path, okay? search of, uh, for a path from S to T in the rest of the network, okay? Now, in this example, right? So in, in the red line, you see, I have a path from, from S to T. And this path goes through capacity two, one, one, and one, right? Okay, so how much, how much amount of flow can I actually push by following this red path from S to T? How much? One. One, right? Because because you cannot push more than one because if you push more than one following this path, then, then this edge and this edge and this edge would be overflow, right? Right, okay? So, so after you have found the augmenting path, you only need to look at- Hello? Hello? Okay. Hello? Okay. So then all you can, so once you have found this, once you have found this path, right, you look at all the residual capacity, residual capacity along this path and, and identify the one with the smallest residual capacity. That would be the amount of flow you could push from S to T following this augmenting path, okay? All right, okay, so so now in this example, okay, so the current flow, the current flow is, is shown here, okay? It's shown here. Now, if we follow this, okay, if we, if we follow the, if we follow, if we follow this, this augmenting path and push, and push flow of one over, okay? Then this will become the new flow, okay? This two, 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 zero, two, zero, two, one, three, one. Okay, this will become the new flow. Okay, how? Let's let's quickly compare, right? So, before the augment, remember the augmenting path. Remember the augmenting path is from here to here to here and to here. Remember, right? Okay, okay. So you see, I the currently is one. Okay, now I push another one, so this will become two, okay? Now here, originally is from X to U, I have one. Now I push one, so this will revert back to zero, okay? Same thing here. The current flow have a flow of one from V to X. Now I'm pushing one from X to V, so this will become zero. And currently I have V to T with the flow amount of two. Now I push one more, so it becomes three and three. Okay, so you see, you check here, you see? Two, three, zero, three, zero, one, and three, three. Okay, so that's how you modify. That's how you modify the flow and become this new flow. Okay, and now since you, since before, before this augmentation, the value of the flow is equal to three. Now, after you have add one amount of flow from S to T, you see, now the value of the flow has become four now, okay? It has become four now, okay? So that's how you, you can use the residual network to identify the augmenting path, okay? And push the flow from S to T following the augmenting path to increase the flow, okay? Are we okay? So this is, this is how the algorithm works. Okay, okay. Now we need to talk about uh, we need to talk about uh, this the most most important theorem. Okay, 
of this entire lecture. Okay, it's called maximum flow minimum cut theorem. Okay, this is the most important uh, theorem you need to you need to know. Okay, of the entire lecture. Okay, the theorem says this. Okay, I have three statements here. Okay, one, two, and three. Okay, these three statements are exactly the same. Okay, these three statements are exactly the same. Meaning, if one is true, the other two are also true. If one is not true, the other two are also not true. Okay, they are totally equivalent. Okay, the first one is, the first one is, if F, the first one is that the flow F, okay, flow F is a maximum flow. Okay, the second statement says that flow F, okay, has no augmenting path in the residual network. Okay, statement number three is the value of the flow is already equal to the capacity of some cut, okay? The capacity of some cut, okay? Remember, earlier we said that the capacity of a cut must be an upper bound of any legal flow, remember, right? Okay, now if your flow has already achieved to your upper bound, that means you cannot add any more, right? If you add any more, then there must be some violation, okay? So, so you see, three is is kind of intuitive, right? If your flow has already achieved to the to the upper bound, right? And so that means F is already maximum, okay? And the second one says that in your residual network you won't be able to find the augmenting path, okay? So these three are exactly identical statements, okay? So we're going to prove them, okay? And these three are very important, okay? Because we're going to come back to that algorithm that we just talked about, okay? The the algorithm to construct the residual network, finding the augmenting paths, push additional flow, and so on, right? The question is, when do we stop, right? The question is, in that algorithm, that algorithm, you already got a pick, you already got, you should already got uh, some idea, right? The idea is you start with some kind of legal flow and you start constructing the residual network, push the uh, the additional uh, flow amount through the augmenting path, and then construct the residual network again, push another flow through the rest, through the augmenting path, and so on, right? The question is, when does your iteration stop, okay? Okay, so this theorem gives you that answer, okay? This theorem gives you that answer. The theorem tells you that, that basically is the statement number three, okay? When you follow that iteration, to the to the to the point that you are not able to find augmenting path, okay? Then that's the time you should stop, okay? At that time, that you are not able to find the augmenting path, what can you say about your flow, okay? You can say that the flow is already is already maximum, okay? According to the theorem, okay? The flow is the maximum flow, and the flow must have must be equal to some mean cut capacity okay so these two these two uh, property can be can be claimed for the flow okay that means you have solved the problem right because we're solving the maximum flow problem okay so all right so now i need to prove it to you so that the whole story is complete right okay all right so how do we prove the theorem okay so we're going to we're going to follow this this uh, order. We're going to prove if one is true, then two is true. And then we prove if two is true, three is true, okay? And then we're going to prove if three is true, one is true, okay? Then that's a cycle. That means they are all equally true or equally false, okay? Okay, so that's how we're going to proceed. All right, so the first one, if one is true, then two is true, okay? So that means if your flow has already been uh, has already e is already equal to the capacity of some cut, okay? It's equal to the capacity of some cut, okay? Then this flow is maximum flow, okay? The proof is this, okay? The proof is that since the the flow, okay, from the from the earlier uh, lemma, right? The flow any flow must be upper bounded by the capacity of any cut, right? Of any cut by the by the uh, lemma or corollary that we talked about earlier, right? Okay, 
So this must be true. It must be an upper bound. Okay. So now if it is already equal, okay, the statement number one says that it is already equal. Okay. That means that F has already reached to the bound, right? Okay. So it's the maximum, obviously. Okay. So one to two proof is easy. Okay. Now two to three, if F is a maximum flow, okay, then F you are not you should not find the uh, augmenting path in your residual network. Okay. All right. So proof is also very easy. Okay. If you are able to find the augmenting path in your residual network, okay, then you can follow that augmenting path to push additional flow through and increase your flow. Okay. Therefore, your F is not maximum. Okay. So by contradiction, by contradiction, you should not have an augmenting path. Okay. So two to three is also very easy. Okay. Now we need to prove three to one. Okay. Three to one says that if F has no augmenting path, okay, in your residual network, you cannot find augmenting path. Okay. Then we're going to prove that the flow has already reached to the capacity of certain cut. Okay. Three to one. Okay. We're going to prove as follows. Okay. Okay. So three, three says that if flow has no augmenting path. Okay. Okay. So we look at the we look at the residual network of that F. Okay, we look at the residual network of that F. Okay, and then we we start from the source node S. Okay, start from the source node S. Okay, let's say we do DFS. Okay, we do DFS. Okay, in the residual network, remember in the residual network we do DFS from S to find all the vertices, to find all the vertices reachable, okay, reachable in the residual network. And we call that as capital S, okay? And the remaining vertices are the vertices in T, okay? So we have S and T, okay? So, so S are all the vertices reachable from S in the residual network, okay? And T is the remaining vertices. So S union T is equal to V. Okay. So this is this is a partition. Okay. And also observe that capital S is in S because source node has a path to itself, right? So this this source node must be in capital S. And sync, okay, sync must be in capital T. Okay. Because there is no augmenting path, there is no augmenting path from source to sink, right? So T should not be reachable from source, right? So T should be in capital T, okay? Okay, so then therefore S and T is a cut, okay? Is a cut, okay? Now let's consider the following, okay? Let's consider a vertex in capital S. Okay, all the vertices reachable from source node in the residual network. Okay, and B is in the in capital T. Okay, not reachable from S. Okay, all right. So therefore, we must have we must have the residual the resi This is the residual capacity, right? The residual capacity of this UV. Okay, of this UV must be zero. Okay, must be zero. Meaning what? Meaning this edge must be saturated by the current flow by F. Okay, why? Because if this is not zero, if this is not zero, that means it has to be greater than zero. Capacity can never be negative, right? That's 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 all be uh, be reasonable, right? Capacity would never be zero, be negative. So if it is not zero, then it must be greater than zero. If it is greater than zero, if it is greater than zero, then V must be part of capital S because V would be reachable from S. Okay. So V should not be in T. Okay. V should not be in T. Okay. So, but we assume V is in T. Okay. So this cannot be true. Okay. The, the residual capacity from U to V cannot be greater than zero, must be equal to zero. Okay. Okay. That means the flow must current flow F must have saturated this capacity, right? F of UV must be equal to C of UV. Okay. Okay. 
All right, now, if we do this, if we do this analysis for all the U and all the V, okay? For all the U and all the V, okay? So that, and we add all of the flow together on the left-hand side, okay? And add all the uh, capacity together on the right-hand side among all the, among all the edges that are being cut through, that are being cut by this cut, okay? Then the left-hand side will be, oops, then the left-hand side will be the summation. Summation of all the flow, summation of all the flow, crossing, crossing from capital S to capital T, okay? And the right-hand side, right, okay? And the right-hand side of this equation will be equal to the total capacity, the total capacity of the cut, okay? Okay, so if you summing, if you summing this, if you summing this equation, summing this equation, okay? For all the possible UV pair, okay? Such that U is in S, V is in T, okay? For all the UV pair, then the left-hand side will be equal to the total flow amount across the cut, and the right-hand side will be equal to the total cut capacity, okay? across the cut, okay? Okay, so that means what? Okay, now this flow, the flow across any cut must be equal to the value of the flow, okay? So the value of the flow must be equal to this cut capacity already, okay? That is the num number one statement. The number one statement is that the value of the flow is equal to some cut capacity has reached to the minimum capacity okay okay so that's what this so how we prove if three is true one is true okay okay so because we have proved that the value of the flow must be equal to this cut must be equal to the the flow of flowing across this cut okay and the and uh and because of the flow of this uh, across this cut is equal to the uh, the cut capacity. Therefore, the value of the flow is equal to the cut capacity, okay? Okay, so these three statements are proved, okay? So now, the way to use this, this uh, theorem in our algorithm, why do we need this algorithm, okay? Sorry, I'm sorry. Why do we need this theorem? Why do we need this theorem is because in our algorithm that I just talked about. We start with some, some legal flow, and then we find the residual network, and we find augmenting path, we increase the flow, okay? And then we find the residual network again, find the uh, augmenting path, increase the flow, and then find the residual network, find the augmenting path, increase the flow, and, and do this iteration over and over and over again. Until when, right? When do we stop, okay? We stop when you are no longer able to find the augmenting path, okay? That's the time you stop, okay? When you uh, are no longer able to find the augmenting path, according to this theorem, okay? When three is true, okay? Two is also true. You have found the maximum flow, okay? That's why this theorem is so important, okay? Now, this is, yeah? So I think we can have uh, multiple augmenting paths, right? Yes, yes. So we select the augmenting path which gives us the maximum flow? Okay, well, okay, so that's a very, very good question. So when you have, uh, as a matter of fact, we're going to talk about how to select the augmenting path also, right? You, so you're, you're, you're totally correct. There are, uh, given, a, uh, given a residue network in general, you can find many uh, many different augmenting paths. Which one would you choose? Okay, so which, whichever one you choose, you're going to increase the amount of flow by the minimum edge capacity along this path, right? Remember that, right? Okay, you find the edge with the minimum residual capacity. You can only increase that amount, okay? So choosing different augmenting paths, okay, to increase your flow, okay, could give you different amount different amount of flow increase, okay? It could give you different amount of flow increase, okay? 
So if you choose a residual network, so if you choose a augmenting path, okay, whose the minimum uh, residual capacity is larger, then you're going to increase faster, okay, increase your flow amount faster, okay. So <coughs> on the other side, on the other hand, you increase your flow amount flow, okay. Okay, so, uh, so, but the bottom line, but the bottom line is, is that the maximum flow, okay, either way you choose, okay, it's only a matter of how many iterations you're going to spend, okay, how many iterations that, that I just talked about, how many iterations you're going to do before you reach to the maximum flow, okay, the, yeah. your, end, your end solution should be the same, your maximum flow amount should be the same, okay, but following different augmenting paths, sequence, sequence, right, you could have different pace, different pace of reaching to that maximum flow. Okay, that's a very good question. Okay, I, uh, I, I should consider putting that as uh, one of the final exam questions. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good question. Okay, so I hope this clarify what you, what you, uh, what you think. Thank you. Okay, so, so now this is the, uh, the, the, the first famous uh, maximum flow algorithm. It's called forward focusing. Okay, so you should also remember the name, right? Okay, Ford Fulkerson. Okay, like Floyd Washell, right? Okay, and so Ford Fulkerson, right? Or Bell, uh, or uh, uh, remember the Dijkstra algorithm, right? Okay, and so on. So all these are the, the important names that you need to uh, remember. So Ford Fulkerson is the first algorithm that solved the maximum flow problem. Okay, idea is well, quite simple. You start with the flow, you start with the flow that has every edge flow amount is equal to zero. Okay, all the edges, all the edges has zero flow. Okay, is it a legal flow? Of course, zero flow would never violate, uh, would never violate the capacity constraint, right? Zero flow everywhere would definitely honor the uh, flow conservation, right? Okay. And zero minus zero, of course, that's uh, the the skew symmetry, right? Skew symmetry is actually just just a property. It's not really a requirement. Okay, it's a it's a property. Okay, so zero and versus minus zero, right? From f from uh, f of u to v is equal to minus f of v to u. Okay, so uh, so we start with zero everywhere. Okay, okay, so. Now, given this legal flow where we have zero everywhere, right? You start constructing the residue network, and you find the augmenting path, okay? And and then you push it, you push the flow, you push the flow using the minimum edge capacity, okay? Amount, okay? You push the minimum edge capacity amount along your augmenting path, right? Push that amount of flow, okay, into F. Okay, so you increase your value of the flow. Okay, and then you build a residual network again, and you try to find the augmenting path. And then again, you push the mean the 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 uh, minimum uh, residual uh, capacity along that augmenting path, right? And you increase the flow, and so on. So you do this iteration, iteration until you are not able to find the augmenting path anymore. And according to the maximum flow, minimum cut zero, that's the time your F is the maximum flow. Okay, okay. So this algorithm is quite simple for focusing. Okay, now, however, there's a problem in this in this algorithm is that this algorithm can be very slow. Okay, let me show you this example. This is a very small example with only four vertices in your flow network. Okay, and all the numbers are the are the capacity, right? These are the capacity along every edge, okay? All right, so four vertices, five edges, okay? Now let's run this forward focus on algorithm. You start with everything zero, okay? And then you build the residual network, okay? And you look for the augmenting path from S, from S to T, right? Okay, so now let's do it. Okay, so you start with everything zero, okay? And then you find the augmenting path. This red line shows you the augmenting path that we're going to push the flow, 
Okay, increase the flow, right? How much amount of flow can you increase? One. Yeah, one, right? So remember this edge, the capacity is one billion, right? Okay, and this is one, and this is one billion, right? Okay, so this edge, the residual capacity is only one. You can only push from zero to one, right? Okay, this is one billion. Okay, this this residual capacity one billion. This residual capacity one billion. But remember, we said that you have to use the minimum residual capacity to push, right? Okay, so you could only push amount of one through this path. Okay, so you get this picture. Okay, so you see one and and you you see one and one and one there. Okay. And then you construct a residual network, right? Okay, residual network, so this will become, okay, so you, ha you had this one, right? Now residual network has one billion, this is one, okay? I, I already explained why this is, why there is a residual capacity one there, right? From, from, the, from this node to that node, because there is a current flow of one from top to bottom you can have the reverse flow of the same amount from bottom to top, okay? And this residual capacity is also one billion, right? So from S to T, okay, your augmenting path will become this, okay? So again, you push how much? Also one, right? Okay, so you push, so this become one, this become zero, and this become one, okay? Now you see two iterations, you only increase, okay? This to one, this to one, this is zero, this is to one, this is to one, right? But the obvious, the obvious answer, the obvious answer for this maximum flow problem is what? Is, is what? You have one billion amount of flow from S to T following this path. And also one billion amount of flow from here following this path, right? Okay. Going on, going the going the path on the top, okay, is one billion, right? Because capacity is one billion, capacity one billion, so you can push one billion this path, and one billion this path. So, so the maximum flow in this example is two billion, right? Two billion, okay. But in here we need to run so many iteration, okay? Because, because as I as I just did, right? Two iteration, you only increase to one, right? Two iteration, you only increase to one. So this, this, um, this flow is equal to one plus one is equal to two, right? Each iteration, you push flow of one. So you need what? You need two billion iteration because the maximum flow amount is two billion. So you need to run two billion iterations, okay? Uh, for this small design, okay? So this this can be disastrous, right? Could be very, very bad, okay? So again, this is only when you're, you're, you're unlucky, right? You always, you always, in, in the example, in the, in the execution, I always pick, I always pick the, the path, okay? Going through the middle edge, right? Okay, so that's why if you're always unlucky, Okay, pick the, the middle edge and so on, then you would need to spend two billion iterations to get it, okay, which is very slow, okay? But if you are lucky, you, you pick this, you pick this edge as your augmenting path, and or this edge as your augmenting path, right? Then that would be, then that would be very fast, right? <clears throat> okay, then, the, then you will saturate this uh, capacity very fast. Okay, okay, so uh, do we want to take a break? Sure. Yeah, I actually need a break also. I, I am uh, not feeling so well, so yeah, let's take a five or 10 minute break. Okay, sure. and we come back. Yeah, we'll pause the recording. Okay, that, yeah, let's keep the connection here. Then, you you end up with the new flow f prime and based on that flow you can build the residual network again right and then the resultant shortest 
the shortest distance is called delta prime v. Okay, delta prime v is the shortest distance in the residual network based on f prime. Okay, okay, so okay, good. So delta v is the shortest distance in the residual network based on f, and delta prime v is the shortest distance of the residual network based on f prime. Okay. And we're going to show that we're going to show that the delta prime v okay, is larger than or equal to delta v. Okay? Because we're saying this is increasing monotonic, right? Iteration by iteration, right? Okay? Iteration of what? Of augmentation, right? Okay? Of the path augmentation. Okay. And we're going to prove this. This is incre increasing monotonically by induction. By induction on this number, okay, on the delta prime v, okay, we're going to induction on the delta prime v, okay, all right, so now, okay, so after the past past augmentation is done, right, okay, okay, we we're going to look at the look at the new uh, shortest distance, okay, now let's look at the base case, okay, the base case. When the when the uh, v when the v itself is equal to s, okay, then the delta prime s, okay, s to s, right? Remember the we, we the delta delta function is is what is the shortest distance from the source node to the node you're interested, right? So source to source, of course, is zero, right? Source to source is equal to also uh, uh, so. Before the pass uh, augmentation, okay, from source to, to source in in the uh, residual network before the augmentation, okay, is also equal to zero, right? Because source to source in whatever network, whatever net residual network, okay, the distance is zero, okay. So zero is greater than or equal to zero. So this property is true, okay. So that's our base case of induction, okay. Okay, now so base case is is proved. So we're going to prove the induct in the inductive case. Okay, all right. So let's consider a, a breakfast search path. Okay, in the in the residual network after the augmentation. Okay, suppose there is a breakfast search path. Okay, shortest path from S to U and to V in the residual network after the augmentation. Okay. Then, because this is the shortest path, therefore we have delta prime v is equal to delta prime u plus one, right? Okay. Remember, this is what we we have been using this for a long, long, long time, right? The, the first lecture about the shortest path. Okay. I, I I emphasize to you that right there that along the shortest path, okay, along the shortest path, if we have a shortest path from s to u to v, right? Then the then the delta v is equal to delta u plus one, okay, because of the optimal substructure, s to u, okay, is also a shortest path, right? Remember that, okay. So we have uh, this as a corollary of that observation, okay. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, which you should, then you you need to go back to the first lecture of the shortest path, okay. To retrieve this, I think this is the first three or four uh, uh, slides okay, that tells you this. Okay, so because this is the shortest path, okay, therefore delta prime v is equal to delta prime u plus one. Okay, all right, and remember this this is the after the pass aug uh, augmentation. Okay, after one iteration there. Okay, okay. Now certainly, okay. Certainly, you, we we said this u to v, this u to v is in the residual network after the augmentation, right? So this edge must be in there, must be in this residual network after after augmentation. But what about the same edge be in the residual network before the augmentation? Okay, the residual network before the augmentation. Okay, is it part of it or not? Okay, then there are two cases. Okay, the first case is that this edge UV is in the residual network before the augmentation. It is there. Okay, then we have the following. Uh, we have following conclusion. Okay, all right. We said that if UV is in the residual network of the uh, is in the residual network before the augmentation, then delta V 
okay, the shortest distance from S to V must be upper bounded from S to U, shortest distance plus one. This is triangular inequality, okay? Okay, because the, the S from S to U plus U to V, right? That is also a path, right? And that path length is equal to delta U plus one. And since delta V is the shortest, therefore delta V must be smaller than that, okay? This is triangular inequality, okay? And then now delta U is smaller than delta U prime. So this is our induction, okay? This is our induction, okay? Because delta U prime is smaller than, uh, delta U prime is smaller than delta, uh, sorry, delta prime U is smaller than delta prime V, okay? So this, this can be applied. Okay, due to the induction. And we, we already know delta prime V is equal to delta prime U plus one. Okay, therefore you, we establish delta V is smaller than or equal to delta prime V. That means after one pass augmentation, your delta value gets increased. Okay, so for the first case, okay, this monotonicity has already been proved. Okay, it's increased, okay. Now the second case is that this edge UV, okay, was not part of the residual network before the augmentation, okay? If it was not, okay? All right, and however, however, we said that UV, okay, since UV is, is in the residual network after the augmentation, right? After, it is not there before, okay? But it is there after, okay? Okay, you need to think about this. If there's an edge that was not there in the residue network before a pass augmentation, and then after that pass augmentation, this edge starts showing up, okay? What would be the only possibility, okay? The only possibility is this. In that pass augmentation, okay, the augmenting path, okay, the augmenting path must include this edge VU, okay? The augmenting path, okay, the augmenting path that uh, that produce from that produce uh, this this uh, f prime this new flow from the original flow, okay, must have gone through this vu, okay, okay. So since this augmenting path goes through vu, okay, and therefore the resultant residual network has an edge from u back to v, right? Remember to push the flow. To, to, to revert the flow. That's why UV starts showing, okay? Start showing, okay? So, uh, and moreover, this P, since we're talking about Amos carp algorithm, this P must be a shortest path, okay? Must be a shortest path in the residual network before the augmentation. We must have picked the shortest path, okay? So that let's say that shortest path is this. S to V, remember, VU must be in it, okay? So you have S da 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 to V, and then V to U, and then U da 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 to, to T, right? This is the augmenting path from S to T, right? And VU must be there, okay? Because of this augmentation of this path, then U to V starts showing, starts showing in the residue network afterwards, okay? Okay, now, looking at this, uh, look at this shortest path in the, residue network before the augmentation, okay? Then we have this, okay? Because this is the shortest path with, by the same reason we have, okay? We have delta U is equal to delta V plus one. So delta V is equal to delta U minus one, right? Okay, so that's, uh, that's the same corollary that we have, I talked about uh, earlier, okay? And this delta U is upper bounded by delta U prime. This is our induction hypothesis. Okay, this induction hypothesis. Okay, and then our delta u prime is e delta u prime plus one is equal to delta prime delta prime v, right? Remember this right here. Okay, okay. So delta prime v is equal to delta prime u plus one. Okay, so okay, so delta prime u is equal to delta prime v minus one. Okay, so therefore there is a minus one, so it's minus two. Now you see the, the shortest distance for V before, okay, and after, okay? And minus two obviously is upper bounded by without minus two, okay? 
So you see delta prime B is greater than delta B, right? So you see the shortest path, the shortest distance for this vertex V has been proved to be also growing monotonically from uh, iteration of the uh, past uh, augmentation, okay, to the next iteration, okay? So from iteration to iteration, the delta value gets larger and larger and larger and larger, okay? Right? Until the end, until the end, there is no augmenting path that anymore, right? So it can go as, as high as infinity, right? Okay. Okay. So now the first lemma tells you that the, if you use the Amos carp carp algorithm, okay, then your shortest path distance, shortest distance from source to, to any node, okay, in the residue network should grow monotonic, okay. Now we're ready to prove that Edmonds Cobb algorithm runs in polynomial time. Okay, all right. So the proof is is as follows. Okay, okay. The proof goes as follows. Let's say I have a uh, augmenting path P right here. Okay, and suppose that U V is the is the path. Sorry, U V is the edge whose residue capacity is the smallest along this path. Okay, let's say it one more time. This edge U V whose capacity is the smallest, okay, along this, this augmenting path P, okay? So UV is in this P and the capacity is the smallest, okay? Then after we push the flow, after we push flow along P, then UV will get saturated, right? Because its capacity is, its residue capacity is the smallest. So after you push, it will become zero, okay? Right, okay? So, the, the example is here. And because it, okay, because it becomes zero, so it would disappear from the residue network after the flow augmentation, okay? The example is here, okay? Suppose this is our current residue network of the flow F, okay, from S to T. This is just a part of the, part of the residue network. I just drew the, this part, okay, to show you. In general, the residue network could be much bigger, okay? So suppose we so we choose this as an augmenting path, right? Here to here, here to here, here to here, here to here, here to here. So this is our augmenting path, right? And we have uh, we have uh, this residual capacity two, four, seven, two, three, right? So the so the largest amount of flow that you can push through this path is bounded by two. You cannot do more than two, right? Okay. So after you have pushed the full amount of two from S to T this edge is saturated and this edge is saturated, right? We call them critical, okay? We call these two edges as critical, okay? So you see, after we push, right? Okay, then the original, this is four and seven, now becomes two and five, right? Because you, you, you have pushed two and this was the original two, now it's zero. And this was the original two, now it's gone, right? And this was three, now it becomes one, right? Okay, and then the original, this reverse side is three. Now, because you push two more, so the, so the reverse can be five now, okay? And then same thing, the reverse is two. Now you push two more uh, from left to right. So the from right back to uh, left can be four now, right? And this is two, this is from one to three. This is from two to four, right? See, one to three and two to four, get it? Okay, so. Yeah, so you see, these are, the, so these two, okay, these two edges in red, okay, are the so-called critical edges, okay, in this path augmentation, okay? Okay, now let's, let's look at these um, critical edges, okay? So we're going to look at, we're going to look at uh, uh, arbitrary edge. Let's just take an edge UV, okay? Let's just take an edge UV right here. Okay, we take an edge UV and we think about the first time, okay? The first time this UV becomes critical, okay? That means this UV is on the residue network, okay? And, and it, it, is the, uh, it is the smallest, the residue capacity is the smallest, okay? So after you push, then this will disappear, okay? Okay, and now, it, at the time, at that time, this becomes critical. You must have chosen a, uh, a augmenting path that goes through UV, right? Obviously, you must have. You must the the augmenting path must go through it, 
okay? And the, remember, Ammons and Carb uses shortest path, right? BFS to find the augmenting path, okay? So UV must be on the shortest path, right? Okay, therefore we have a delta V is equal to delta U plus one, right? Again, that, that corollary you can find in the first uh, third or four uh, slides in the shortest path lecture, okay? Okay, so you have this relationship. Delta V is equal to delta U plus one, okay? Because P is the shortest path, okay? All right, now, this is the first time. This is the first time this edge UV becomes critical, okay? Now think about the same edge could become critical again, okay? From the first time it was critical, it was critical to become the critical again the second time, okay? To become critical again the second time. All right, then you need, you need to think about between this first time and the second time, right? We must, okay, we must have gone through, we must have gone through an augmenting path, okay? Okay, we must have gone through an augmenting path that actually goes through VU, okay? That actually go augmenting path that actually goes through VU, okay? And then after you augment the flow, using this augmenting path, then UV will reappear, right? Right? So you must have, a, you must have uh, used an augmenting path to push flow from VU, right? Then UV will reappear and then will become, could possibly become critical again, right? Okay, so, so there must be an augmenting path that would go through UV Oh, sorry, that would, that would go through uh, VU, okay? And after this augmentation, UV will show up again in the residue network, okay? Now let's use delta prime, okay? Be the shortest distance function, okay? When this VU is on that critical path, oh, sorry, is on that augmenting path, okay? Is on that aug augmenting path, okay? So you push the flow following that augmenting path, okay? So because that of that flow, okay, the UV will reappear, okay? All right, so that's called U prime be the shortest, shortest path uh, function at that time, okay? Okay, now because VU is on the augmenting path, the augmenting path must be shortest, okay? Therefore, we have delta prime U is equal to delta prime V plus one, right? Remember? This is S to V, S to da 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 V, and then V to U, and U to da 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 to T, right? Okay, so that's, that must be a, uh, a uh, breakfast search, the, the shortest path. Therefore, you have this same corollary that we talked about, okay? Delta prime U is equal to delta prime V plus one, okay? Now, based on the lemma we talked about, the, the monotonicity uh, lemma, okay? So this guy must be up, must be an upper bound, right? Must be greater than or equal to the earlier uh, shortest distance, right? Because this is later, this is earlier, okay? So this later shortest distance must be larger, right? Remember, grow mono monotonically, right? Okay, and then, we, and then we also see that delta V, you see delta V is equal to delta U plus one. We plug in here, okay? So you go to delta U plus two, you see? So the new delta prime U is at least, is at least two times, two, uh, num uh, but is at least larger, is larger than delta U by at least two, right? This, okay, the, this new, uh, new uh, shortest distance must be larger than this earlier, earlier shortest distance by at least two, okay? So remember, this is the time, this is the time when you have the flow, when you have the augmenting path going through from V back to U, okay? At that time, okay, your, your uh, delta uh, value will be at least twice, okay? So I'll show you an example, okay? In this example, Suppose this is our augmenting path, okay? Suppose, okay, at the beginning, I have, a, I have a flow from U to V. I have a flow from U to V. And then I have found the augmenting path, okay? 
okay, from S to T. Let's say at this time, delta U is five and delta V is six. Okay, okay. So that's, this, is, this is our augmenting path, right? So remember, delta V must be larger than delta U by one because this is the shortest path distance, right? Okay, so you push the flow through, okay? Now, after you push the flow, then there is a, there's an edge V back to you, okay, in the residue network, okay? And then later, when you have found an augmenting path, that actually goes through V, that actually goes through V back to U and then to T, okay? After you have found this augmenting path, the, the, the delta, the delta U originally was five, okay? At the time when you, at the time when you have found the augmenting path from U to V, okay? This delta value of this guy, of this U, must have gone from five to seven. Okay, because it has to increase by at least two. Okay, okay. And then after this is, this uh, augmenting path is pushed, okay, then you would have this edge in the residue network. Okay, now if you have another augmenting path from U to V, okay, then this delta was originally at least six. Now it should be at least eight now because it has to be larger than at least by two, okay? So after every, after every uh, uh, pass augmentation, okay, the delta value can grow by two, okay? You see the delta value, okay? The delta value can grow at least by two, okay? Okay, so now we're, we're ready to draw conclusion, okay? All right, so remember, okay, with the distance, okay, the shortest distance, shortest distance, okay, we start with, we start out with non-negative number, right? Distance can never be negative, right? Okay, and then remember, in the residue network, the distance will only grow because of mon monotonically, right? Well, monotonicity, remember that lemma, it never decreases, okay? However, the distance, the distance in the residue network has a bound, right? What could be the what could be the longest, what could be the largest number of edges in the shortest path from S to T? Okay, in the residue network. This is an important question, right? In the residue network from S to T, how many what is the largest possible number of edges can you have? Okay in that, uh, in, in the path from S to T in the rest of the network. It would be at, it would be at most V minus one, right? Yes. Right, because, right, because we're talking about, we're talking about the shortest path, right? The shortest path, right? And you can, you can only uh, visit one, one node at at, at most one time, right? So your number of edges in your augmenting path, in your shortest path, okay, can be at most, can be at most V minus one, okay? Okay, so your, your delta value, your delta value has a bound, right? right? Okay, distance, Dita distances are at most V minus one, okay? Okay, and until, until the vertex becomes unreachable, that, that's the time the distance suddenly shoot up to infinity, right? Right? When it, when you, when it reaches to V minus one, that is the largest possible, okay? If you increase even more, then it would only be unreachable. There's no other possible uh, value, right? Because V minus one is uh, for reachable case, that's the largest possible, right? Okay, okay. All right, so remember the distance, the delta value, the delta value can grow, delta value can grow as much as to order of V, okay? Order of V, okay? And remember we earlier we said that each time an edge, okay, becomes critical, okay? Becomes critical. The delta value will need to increase by at least two, right? Remember the previous, 
the previous uh, the, the the previous of of the base shade here it has to be increased by at least two, right? Okay, okay. So so, but the largest possible delta value is v. The largest possible delta value is v. Therefore, the number of times each edge can become critical, okay, can become critical, is order of v, right? Okay, let me say it one more time. Each time, each time a vert, uh, edge uv, each time an edge uv becomes critical, the delta value will need to increase by two, at least increase by two. And the delta value has a bound, which is at most v, right? Okay. Each time an edge becomes critical, you need to increase by two. And the largest possible delta value is at most v. So the number of times this edge becomes critical must be at most v divided by two, right? Because you would, because every time you become a critical, you need to add two, add two, add two, add two. So the number number of times this edge can become critical, okay, can become critical is at most v divided by two, which is order of v, right? Okay, are we okay on this? Um, yeah, professor, it would be really nice if you if we can. Uh, you know, put this Edmunds card onto the example that you gave before the 10 billion. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay. 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 So, <laughs> so let's look at this. Okay. All right. So for this edge UV. Okay. For this edge UV, you see that. Okay. I'll show you an example. So, okay. So at the beginning. Okay. At the beginning, this edge. Sorry. Uh, okay, Put my cursor is here. Okay, at the at this at this time. Okay, suppose this is the time UV. Okay, UV is on the on the augmenting path. Okay, and now with this with this pass augmentation. Okay, this has saturated. This has saturated, so it will be gone, right? Okay, after you push, this will be gone. Okay, so suppose at that time this is five and this is six. Okay, five and six. Okay, now after you have pushed, this is gone. Okay, so you end up having this edge back, and there's no there's no edge from U to V because it's already saturated. Okay, now next time, okay, in order to have U V back to back to be critical, you need to have augmenting path. Okay, that will go from V to U. Okay, okay, go from V to U. Okay, now at this time when you have such a case, you will use, you will use delta value must have already gone from five to six, at least seven, from five to at least seven. Okay, from five to at least seven. And then after this push, okay, after this push, then UV comes out again. Okay, UV comes out again, and then you would have chance. That's the time you have a starting having a chance that UV will become critical again. Till the time that UV becomes critical again, the second time, okay? The second time, you see? V, at this time, V, the, the delta value of V would need to go at least from six to eight, okay? So from, so to summarize, look at, look at this comparison. At the beginning, this is the, this is the time that UV, this is the time that UV becomes critical, okay? And after augmentation, it disappears. The delta value is five and six, okay? Five and six, remember that. Now, this is the time that UV shows up again and becomes critical and augment. So delta U will be at least seven and delta V will be at least eight. So they will need to grow. Both, both show this show delta, Delta value for U and V has to grow at least by two. Okay? The delta value has to grow at least by two. Get it? Are you okay on this now? Okay? For any edge, for any edge UV, from the from the time that it is critical to the time that it is critical again. 
both u and v their delta value have to grow by at least two okay you understand this part first i have i have shown you here okay now if you agree on this okay then we are we're on this page to try to bound out okay all right you remember delta value can be as high as v okay delta value can be as high as v okay now for each edge uv okay to go from being critical to uh, to critical again okay their delta value their delta value has to increase by at least two okay the delta value has to increase by at least two for both u and v right okay now the delta value has a bound on v that you guys already agree okay okay so how many plus two can you do right how many plus two can you do so that your delta value is still bounded by order of v that's the question right you you each time each time of being critical you need to plus two for your delta value okay each time to be critical you need to plus two the largest possible delta value is v okay so how many times can you be critical right so that's how many times you can plus two plus two plus two right right how many plus two plus two plus two you can do until you reach to the largest possible which is v right how many v divided by two right yes you can have at most so many at most so many plus two plus two plus two right okay so each plus two each plus two you have one you have the you have that edge to become critical right okay okay so that edge that edge to become critical will be bounded how many times that edge can become critical it's at most v divided by two right at most right one right okay so for each edge for each edge to become critical okay they are totally only v divided by two times okay okay they're totally v, v divided by two times so the entire residual network okay the entire residual network has at most two times e edges okay each edge can have at most v divided by two times to be critical okay they are totally e edges so totally how many times there is an edge to become critical it's e times v right okay let me let me let me maybe i should just do this uh i i can maybe i should just write it down and okay so you see i have one edge okay one edge i can have at most order of v by two okay to be critical right okay for every for any edge for any edge okay for any edge this edge can be critical on at most v divided by two times make sense right okay now in the residual network in the residual network okay in the residual network there are totally two times e edges residue network has at most two times e edges right okay okay there are at most two times e edges so each edge can be critical at most so many times two times e edges okay okay you can have at most what at most two times e multiplied by divided by two okay there will be at most so many edges okay that can become critical right right and and each critical okay each edge to be critical there must be there must be one augmentation right right i mean i'm okay i'm sorry i should say the the opposite each augmentation each augmentation there will be at least there'll be at least one edge being critical right 
you will saturate at least one edge, right? Makes sense, right? Right? Okay. Each each augmentation, you will have at least one edge to be critical. There are totally e times. There are totally e times v. So many possible edges to can become critical. Okay. These are the total possible edges that can become critical over the over the whole process. Okay. Now each iteration, each iteration, you need at least one to be critical. Therefore, how many iterations can you have? Right? It's bounded by this, right? Okay. So for each edge, there are so many order of v the v divided by two. Okay, chances, chances that this edge can be critical. And there are two E edges. So totally, there are two E times V by two. So many chances, okay? Okay, so many chances, and there are edges to be critical, okay? Now, each, now each iteration, okay? Each iter, one, okay. So one iteration, one iteration, Okay, has one at least one edge to be critical, right? Okay, one iteration has at least one edge to be critical. There are totally v times e. There are totally v times e. Totally v times e. Okay, edge becoming critical. At most, at most, so many edges could possibly become critical. Therefore, the number of iterations must be bounded by this 2e divided by v by 2 divided by 1, right? These are the number of edges that can become critical. Each iteration has one edge to become critical. Therefore, how many iterations can be possibly there? That's the question. So the answer is v times e. Okay? Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah. So this again, the goal here, the goal here is try to bound the number of iterations because in the earlier example, right, we show you this four vertex example. There are two billion iterations that you need to go through, which is very very slow, undesirable. And we said that Amon's carb algorithm is a first polynomial time algorithm. So what that means is that we need to bound the number of path augmentation iterations, okay? Now, how do we bound it? Okay, how do we bound the number of iterations? Okay, that's exactly what I have just gone through, okay? The argument that I have just gone through, okay? For one edge, for one edge, okay? The largest possible, uh, the largest possible times, this edge can be critical is V divided by two, okay? Because from one time to the next time, the uh, delta value has to has to be uh, incre increment by two, okay, right? So the largest possible delta is v. Therefore, this uh, therefore the the edge can only go through v divided by two times to become critical. And since the the residual network has two times e edges, each edge can have so many so many times to become critical. So two E edges would have two E times this, so many times, at most, at most, so many times to become critical, okay? To become critical. Now, each iteration, you would have at least one edge to be critical. There are at most two E times, two E times, so by the way, this is order of V times E, right? Okay, so this is order of E. So, Overall, the number of edge to become critical is bounded by v times e. And each iteration, there has to be at least one edge to be critical. So how many iterations can you have at most? That's the question, right? So it's v times e. Okay, the number of edge being, e being critical is bounded by v times e. The number of edges to become critical is bounded by v times e. 
each iteration require one edge to become critical. So the number of iterations must be bounded by V times Z. Okay, so that's the, that's the, uh, that's the conclusion. The number of iterations, okay, flow augmentation iteration must be bounded by e times, V times Z. Okay, I think that's, uh, that's uh, clear enough. Otherwise, I would be repeating myself. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. So now remember, this is just the number of iteration. And each iteration we need to call VFS, which is order of V plus E, right? So VE, VE times V plus E, therefore is upper bounded by VE squared. Okay. So Edmonds Cobb algorithm, okay, runs in VE squared. Okay. VE squared, which is pretty slow. Okay. Right, simply because the, the, the buffer search takes order of E, right? Okay, all right, so, so VE times E, so VE squared. Okay, so it's pretty slow. Now, this is the last page, okay, of this uh, maximum flow algorithm. Okay, all right, so the, uh, the, 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 best, the best known algorithm up to date for maximum flow, okay, runs in this V, very complicated uh, complexity, right? Okay, VE times is it's uh, so instead of VE square, it's VE times this. So improvement is is that uh, it, it 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 took it takes out E and replaced by this guy. Okay, and uh, now if we allow the runtime as a function of the edge weight, okay, okay, as a function of edge weight, well. Uh, uh, so, so this uh, uh, the the earlier the earlier algorithm, right? The f uh, can't remember the name, uh, which I should, uh, right? For Ferguson, right? So for Ferguson, okay. If you allow if you allow the edge weight as your as part of your runtime complexity, right? For Ferguson is one of them, right? Okay. Then the fastest algorithm for maximum flow is done by these two, okay, Goldberg and Rao. Okay, they they can run in this time. Okay, you see this C, C here is a capacity. Okay, as part of the, as part of the uh, your runtime complexity. Okay, the maximum capacity. Okay. Well, the sorry, okay. in this page, how come it became V E plus E? V plus E times V E become V E square. Oh, sorry, which one? Uh, Go back here. Yeah, so V E square, I mean, it's V F S times V E, right? So it's V plus E times V E. Yeah, and yeah, usually, yeah, 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 yeah. So usually, uh, usually you consider E, usually you consider E is, uh, uh, yeah, when you when you consider E uh, is what? Uh, sorry, uh, is is uh, is at least is at least order of V. Usually, right? It's it's not always true, right? It's not always true, but but when your edge, if it is a connected graph, if it is a connected graph, then then this is the this is true, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you're right. To be more careful, E can be can be uh, it can be smaller than V actually because it could be disconnected. Okay, so but but here we're just assuming that uh, it is a connected graph, so E is at least the order of V. Okay, so you drop you, then you can drop V when you have V plus E. Okay, okay. Anything other than this? We only have. Uh, uh 20 20 more minutes i i don't i actually prepared uh for the next lecture but 20 minutes i don't think i would be able to finish it so so that's that's just uh end here okay any question okay so for the lecture we just talked about maybe this is the slide that would be a little bit uh harder to to, but if you sit down, uh, 
and read this uh, and think about what I just explained. Okay, uh, then it it is not uh, it is not that that uh, deep of uh, thinking to, to to figure it out. Okay, it's just a matter of it's the, for this is 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 uh, is counting. It's just counting. Okay. So, the, uh, the only thing which was confusing, in my opinion, in the first uh, algorithm, it was uh, it was about the capacity, and Edmunds Carp is actually uh, doing BFS yeah. and the edges, but uh, later I understood that it's actually limiting the number of iterations on the bad uh, yeah. path. So it yeah. was that's why, but to yeah. make that bridge is was, was hard for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you don't if you don't use breadth search, then the number of iterations will not have this bound anymore. So you so you could end up having the the problem like uh, like this. Uh, ten billion. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ten, ten, ten billion example. Yes. Okay. So, okay, any other question? Okay, so the final exam will cover till this point, okay? Yeah, any, any other question? I will upload Professor uh, this one too and share the link, the previous one I already uploaded, the recording. Okay. Okay, the I see, I see the the recording. Yep. Okay. In case somebody missed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have, uh, yeah, I should have uh, uh, broadcast the link so that people can uh, follow through the the recording. Yeah. So if you are not able to follow through uh, uh, the explanation earlier, right? There, there will be a, a recording that you can, uh, you can. Uh, listen to it uh, a couple of times to see if if uh, if that will make more sense. Okay. Okay. Anything else? No. Thank you, professor. Thank you, professor. Okay. Yeah. So.